Hello, and welcome to Under 1000. My name's Thomas Flower, and each episode I'll read you a new piece of flash fiction. All of the stories are 1,000 words or less. Today, I'll be reading Recovery. Please be aware that this episode contains strong language and deals with themes of childhood abuse and drug and alcohol addictions. So if that's likely to upset you, or anyone that you're listening with, then you might want to skip this one. I can't remember where it started. It's like everything's blurred, muddled together into a jumble of painful memories that I'm almost scared to interrogate. I know something happened back then so long ago. He hurt me, attacked me when I was defenceless, and left me a shell of the child I was. But I don't remember specifics. I don't remember when, or where, or how. I don't remember what the first time was like, or the last. I don't remember how many times it happened. I don't remember what I would do when it was over. All I remember is the fear and the pain and the realization that was suddenly thrust upon me that the world was not a safe place and that my survival in this wretched life was precarious at best. I suppose that's why I ended up doing what I did. It's a cliché. I almost bore myself thinking about it. But for those in pain, anything which numbs things a little makes forgetting that touch easier is a friend. A friend with a twisted smile who stabs a knife in just as you're passing out in his arms. But a friend, nonetheless. When I was so young, I guess I didn't know any better. But now I have real friends, and I'm trying not to be that person anymore. Not to always turn to the bottle or the pill when life gets too much. To sit in those memories as much as I can. To explore the shapes of them and the depths of the feelings that I'm able to dredge up from that place below, which I don't like to think about. been putting in the work, holding myself accountable, and trying to ensure that others hold me accountable too. It's not easy. In fact, it's exhausting, and I'd much rather just avoid it if I could, pretend the problem's not there and that I have nothing to worry about. But I know that that's no good for me in the long run, and I try to reassure myself that something good will be waiting for me at the end. I know it won't be recovery. Not like other people imagine, anyway. There's some strange myth I think everyone has in their heads that you can go through something like I did and then go to a couple of therapy sessions and BAM! You're cured. Like it magically never happened. You get fixed of the problems and turned into a normal person. It's such bullshit. This thing isn't a wound. I can't stick a plaster over it and be done. It's a scar. It's with me for life. And it all just depends on how I choose to deal with it. Of course, I fucked up more than once on the journey to a better life. But that's common. At least I'm told so. I hear other people share their stories in the groups. And it's rare for someone to make the journey from self-destruction to recovery without a messy incident or two along the way. But it's all a process, isn't it? That's what I try to remind myself. You've got to acknowledge the mistakes. But if you spend too much time punishing yourself for them, you'll only push yourself off the edge again. 
but recently, I fell again. Hard. Drinking, taking drugs, lying in bed and only emerging from the house to buy the smallest amount of food I could survive on. I was almost unrepentant, unapologetic for it. I can't remember why, but something had messed me up in a bad way. Convinced me that there was no point in trying anymore, and that I was better off being numb than having to study the pain in such detail, day after day after day. But Mary... Ah, oh, Mary... She's my lifeline. She's the only one that's really stuck by me, even when she shouldn't have. Even when I've done terrible things. Even when everyone else has disowned me, told me to get myself sorted, before they'll even think about talking with me again. She's always been there, no matter what. And some folks would call her a hero for it, but I don't think she is. I think she's an idiot. I think she should have left me in the gutter, along with everyone else, after some of the awful things I've said and done to her. But she never did, and for that, I'm grateful. Anyway, when I got bad again, she came to see me. Said she hadn't heard from me for days, and she was worried. And she saw me in a mess of my own making. And she looked down with those sad, wrinkled eyes. And all she said was, You can't run for your whole life. And then left. And... I... Well, it hurt. Of course it hurt. Stung like a needle of venom had been plunged into my arm and left there to drip. But as I thought about it, I knew she was right. All of this was only an escape. A way to pretend that things were fine when they weren't. It took me a while to sober up, but Mary's comment helped me get there faster. And when I was in a good way again, ready to talk properly, I called her. And I was crying even before she answered, even before I spoke a word. I said, I'm sorry, Mary. You're right, Mary. I don't want to run anymore. And she replied, in that way she would. And let me walk with you instead. And she has. Every step of the way since. Thank you for listening to Under 1000. I'm your host, Thomas Flower. To follow the show online, look for Under 1000 Pod on Twitter or Facebook, or check out the website at under1000pod.com. If you'd like to support the show on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash under1000pod, where you can sign up to read each month's stories in advance, as well as to have a thank you be read during these credits. The theme music is an instrumental version of In Between Days by Nick Tate and the Sharks. To hear the full song and more from the same EP, go to Nick Tate, N-I-C-T-A-T-E, and the Sharks.bankham.com or search for them on your favourite streaming platform. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and that you'll join me again next time for some more super short fiction.